Hello everybody, let's talk about heavy fighters, or bombers, whatever you'd prefer to call them. What I've done is I've grabbed two bombers, vanilla bombers, off of the workshop, and I've also created one on my own, also vanilla. And I'd like to talk about the difference in our approaches, and whether or not mine are any better or any more durable. In this case, what I've focused on is pure function. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to their ships, and then to my ship, and then we'll go over the function of each ship. This is a really, really excellent ship. It's an exquisite ship called The Judge by Extropic Monk. And it is a fantastic design. I alt-tab there. <laughs> it's a fantastic design. It is fast. It has lots of added functions. It's got a six reloadable missiles and five turrets, uh, sorry, five Gatling. It is just really great, and it's got a ton of features. Uh, I really, really like this ship, but it is designed in such a way that it can be taken out pretty rapidly by missile fire. One or two lucky missile hits against your cockpit and you're gone. The good news is, with that aside, it's actually very strong um, they don't follow the principles I recommend, but they come pretty close at times, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This is the EDI light fighter. Uh, I believe it's, sorry, light bomber. I believe it's called EDI. Let me pull up that. Uh, VDI. I don't know what's up with the VDI guys. They're pulling some weird shit, spamming the front page, and for some reason they've got ten times more subscribers than they have visitors. I'm, I'm really not sure what's going on with their stuff, but they do design relatively nice ships. This ship has a much lighter armament, and it is a much lighter ship. It only has two reloadable missile launchers rather than six. It's got two non-reloadable ones and two Gatling guns rather than five, so it is substantially lighter, and it's also lighter armor, but the armor is really well laid out. Um, if you're going to lay out armor, you can learn a lot from how they've laid it out. Uh, there are some things I would change, but by and large, this ship is really well designed uh, just by armor layout. Unfortunately, armor layout is not what matters. This ship is also quite fast and nimble and works well. Uh, it doesn't have as many, f as many f you know, extra features, but it's also substantially lighter. This ship weighs in at 58,000 kilograms, whereas this ship weighs in at... 81,000 kilograms. So that's a pretty big difference in weight. Uh, 58 to 81 is like 20? 23? 24? 23. So that's 23,000 kilograms of difference in weight. Now what about my ship? Well, my ship has 12 missile bays and 4 Gatling guns. Now if you've ever tried to design something to destroy heavy ships, you know, large ship grids, you know that you have to have a tremendous amount of damage output. In vanilla, that's really your only option. If you mod in other things, you can mod in heavy single-shot weapons that can take out turrets, but if you're going with vanilla, you're going to need to have a massive, massive amount of damage output. But the problem is that 12 missile bays is exactly as effective as 4 or 6. Now, literally, there's, there's almost no difference. And that's because the very first missile that hits will explode, and all of the other missiles nearby will get damaged and explode in space and be pretty fireworks, which is useless. But vanilla doesn't put a cap on what you can do with a programming block, so you can easily use a programming block to moderate your missile fire. And if you fire one missile every eight frames, rather than all your missiles at once, you get a much nicer damage profile, and you can also keep track of your targets much, much easier because you're firing much, much faster. A continuous stream is always easier to track. Let me show you the damage the damage profile difference. Uh, it's really late now, so if I squeak, sorry about that. This is straight up firing. Let's see, what did we accomplish? Not bad, not bad. Looks like it is about two, maybe two and a half ship blocks deep. So now let's go ahead and do a much, much more aggressive firing pattern. Same number of missiles. One every eight frames. 
So, what kind of damage did we get out of that? Around two times as deep. So around twice as much damage. This depends on how many missiles you've got, because it is a method of not wasting missiles. So if you've got 12 missiles, this is going to be twice as effective. If you've got 20 missiles, this is going to be three times as effective, more or less. So the more missiles you're firing from your salvo, the more important it is to break them apart by eight frames each. Another method you can use is to spread your missiles wide enough that they that the one on the right explodes, the one on the left won't be affected. But that's not as efficient uh, in terms of massive amounts of output of damage. So this is definitely the best way to deal damage without doing any complicated large ship stuff with your small ship. So I think it's safe to say that my ship has the fastest and highest damage output of these three ships. It also has a very different design. You notice my cockpit is hidden away. Um, if your ship is over 30,000 kilograms, I really recommend hiding your cockpit because that's a lot of ship to have attached to a single weak point. In vanilla, this means you're going to pave over your cockpit. If you mod in some bricks, you can use glass or whatever, and that's really, really nice, and we'll talk about that some other day. But in vanilla, you basically pave over your cockpit, and that means that your view is something like this. A lot of people hate this. Um, they think it's kind of cheaty. I know that a lot of people have, have uh, uh, you know, gotten upset in combats when you weren't able to see the cockpit. And this is actually now a, a something you can do on the server. You can turn off third-person view, and that will really screw you up if you can't see out of your front. But I generally use cameras anyway, so uh, I always make camera-reliant ships. There's no reason for me to worry too much about it. Uh, obviously, if I am on a server that doesn't allow third per doesn't allow third person view, and all of my cameras are destroyed, I'm in trouble. But that's like a pretty uncommon situation. Of course, one of the biggest problems with this ship is that it's really just sinfully ugly. Um, if your com if your cockpit is not exposed and you've just paved over it, you've basically created a floating brick. But this ship is really good at what it does. It's actually not a whole lot more durable than these ships. Aside from being able to... Th th this ship doesn't have any lucky hit zones. There's no real way to hit the cockpit of this ship with a single missile hit, or even two missiles, and disable it. But putting aside a lucky strike against the cockpit of these ships, all three of these ships are actually almost exactly as durable as each other. And the reason for that is because their designs... Uh, are less and more efficient. So the heaviest ship has the least efficient design in terms of its layout. This ship accidentally gets a very good layout, mostly due to its armor. This ship has a really good layout. And now, uh, see, you know, you're talking your own ship up. Well, let me go ahead and show you. You might remember that we had an 80,000 kilogram and a 60,000 kilogram. This one is 45,000 kilograms. This is the lightest ship by far, and it has the highest damage output by far, and it's just as fast as the other ships, and it's just as durable as the other ships. So... That's not very hard math. Let's talk about durability. Let's go ahead and back up our words with some practice. Let's go ahead and use this ship, since it has two heavy missile launchers. Uh, no, wait, they've got them rigged up stupid. Let's go ahead and use my ship after all. I don't like how VDI does their internal uh, layouts, their, their, their uh, menus. I don't like them, but their ship design is good. So if we turn on our missiles and switch over to single fire mode, we're going to get a much more focused amount of output. And we can see the kind of damage resistance that these ships would tend to have. If we fire at an optimum angle like this, you can see what happens pretty quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and call up our ever popular... There we are. 
Observer mode. You can see that that did no damage. It just ripped off some surface armor and some lights, and frankly, that is not even worth worrying about. But as our hits go on, oh wow, that was also very lucky. Um, we're no longer directly on them. That's fine. Now these missile turrets are no longer connected, and they're going to have trouble. Uh, so that was pretty good. Three hits to destroy the weapon systems of this ship. Although it was basically uh, a focused blast on its most armored section. If we were to fire directly into the grill of the ship, we'll see a different damage profile. These blast doors are really, really great for catching and turning aside missile fire. And you can see that the interior is still undamaged. Now, however, we're starting to rip things apart, and it's starting to get a little bit risky. And now we are dealing serious damage. Uh, where are we? There we go. So let's get back to the grill here. There we go. So you can see that this grill does pretty well for a while, but then it gives way and the interior just gets ripped apart. The big weakness of this ship is the wiring. So this ship has all of its weapons wired into the exact same heavy conduit pipeline, which runs down the length of the ship and then separates into a T-junction at the front. And that gives the ship its unique appearance, but it is also a serious weakness. It means that we've got a lot of fluff on the interior of this ship, making it bulkier, heavier, and weaker. But still, those are the kind of missile hits you'd like to take. Uh, they are not very dangerous hits. Um, no, don't want to quick load. They are not very dangerous hits, and they are pretty much going to be survivable. And we're going to see similar patterns all along the side of this ship. Aside from a direct hit on the cockpit, this ship is quite well braced, mostly due to its size. It doesn't use any of the advanced layouts I'm going to be talking about, but its size uh, ends up making it still have air gaps and uh, and ablative equipment. Inside of the ship is a reactor housing, but it's not particularly well defended, and a couple of shots can easily break in. You can see we've ripped apart the interior of the ship, and we've destroyed all of the connective tissue here, but the ship itself, itself is still actually largely intact. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the engines have been destroyed, but this ship fares pretty well in general missile fires. Uh, you know the, the 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 kind of debris, the kind of hits we get in the sort of combat we might see, it fares pretty well. It can survive three or four missile hits and still be intact. The same is true of the VDI vessel. The heavy missiles on the side of the VDI vessel actually serve as really good armor. Heavy missile uh, uh, embankments or heavy missile modules are very durable, and they'll turn aside missile hits. So you can see that although we destroyed it, we didn't deal any damage to any part of the rest of the ship. But once that missile is gone, we start to cut into the depths of the ship, and things start to get pretty iffy. Whereas the, <coughs> whereas the judge had that long T-junction, this ship is just one bar. The bar here, this is all connected using heavy connective, uh, heavy connective stuff, but the rest of the ship is just light connections. And that means that it saves a fair amount of weight and can be smaller, but it also means that its weapons are out of position to defend it. Right now we're firing into the weapons of Ray on purpose as kind of an ideal, but if we were going to be more accurate, this would be a more likely hit. And those sorts of hits will immediately start to puncture the ship and deal damage, and we've already destroyed the cockpit. So this is a, I mean, it's not quite as durable as the ship that's 20,000 kilograms heavier, but it's still fairly durable. The real weakness of this ship is that the armor is not quite far enough from the uh, cockpit to prevent the damage from propagating through, and the best defensive elements are out of position. So what am I talking about? Well, when we go over to my ship, I'll show you the design philosophy, there we are, I'll show you the design philosophy that we're using here. You can see that I've buried our cockpit in the center of the ship in a way that, you know, a lot of people wouldn't like. But I'm using all of the equipment as armor. So instead of having one heavy reactor, I'm using a lot of small reactors, and I've placed them in a protective barrier around the central cockpit. 
that allows me to defend the cockpit against missile strikes. Then there's an air gap, and then there's a line of armor and engines, and then there's a line of missiles. So these engines all provide protection against fire against the cockpit, and the air gap provides protection, and so do the uh, so do these uh, um, uh, things that produce energy generators, and so does this missile rack. These 12 missile ple things here are very durable, and they are in the perfect position to stop fire from hitting the cockpit, regardless of the angle of attack. As long as it's not from the rear, these are going to catch it. What I've done is I've got three row I've got three different modules. I've got six here with a medium conveyor, a medium um, uh, cargo in the middle, and on the outside I've got three with a medium cargo there, and another one on the side, three and a medium cargo. The result of this is that I do not have one unified supply line. I don't rig all of these up to feed off of one core supply system, and instead they each have their own. Worse, I don't have connectors, so this ship cannot be loaded by a connector. You've got to manually come over here and, and highlight this and hit K and drop things into it. So this is a pretty serious constraint. But I think it's worth it, because it allowed me to stagger my missiles such that I can cover a much, much wider range of hits, and it also made it so that I could reduce the weight of my ship down to less than 40,000 kilograms. Uh, or no, wait, 45,000 kilograms is the weight of the ship. Down to less than 50,000 kilograms. So, because my ship has this layout where I'm using components as armor, I have a pretty high durability for my weight class, and if I am going to fire on my ship, I destroyed nothing. Nothing. Oh, there goes one of my rocket launchers. Oh, there goes another rocket launcher. Oh, there goes a third rocket launcher. Okay, finally we've cut through into the Oh god damn it, there's still another layer of armor and an air gap. Yeah, still intact. Are we still intact? I think we are still intact. Come on, are we not are we not aiming right anymore? Uh there. Okay, finally I think that that gave out. I think that we are now I think that we are now dead. Let's go take a look. So even though I am the lightest ship by far, I have a comparable or even higher durability. Come on, get in. No, it is gone. Okay. So I do have a pretty high durability, and that durability is good against missiles or guns. It's good against both. So obviously... My ship is ugly, and I'm not happy about that, but putting aside how ugly it is, it can survive the most missile hits, it's the lightest, it has the biggest damage output, it's the cheapest, and uh, it has comparable speed. So I'm sort of thinking that my design might have, my design philosophy might have real punch to it. And the core of the design is put your stuff in the way. Your engines shouldn't be at the back of the ship or wherever else you can stuff them. You should put them in places where they defend more important things. Your weapons should be in places where they defend more important things. And I think that that's an important thing to do, and most people don't do it, as you can see. These are very highly rated ships, and I love them, but they don't really put their stuff in the right place to defend them against missile fire. Oh, I rammed it. I did not mean to do that. It's not going to survive that. <laughs> oh, actually it did, because I rammed it in an awkward position. Alright, so let's take a look at the ships after I randomly bombarded them with tons of missiles. Well, my ship is still intact, but it is ripped up pretty badly. I've only got three missile turrets still... or th three missile pods still with a medium cargo bay attached. Oh! And one over here on the side, but it's broken. 
Uh, can I get in? Yeah, I can get in, but I've lost a lot of my engines, and I no longer have thrust in all orthogonal directions. Still, that's a pretty good surviving rate for getting hammered by that many missiles. The VDI, I kind of screwed up and didn't actually hit it, but it survived quite well. Uh, it lost everything except for one missile launcher, but it did pretty well. I came up from underneath, and I ended up basically shearing off the lower half of the ship. And this guy... Whoa, he totally survived. I'm not sure he took any significant damage. I don't think he did. Yeah, I don't know whether that's because I didn't hit him very well, or because he's very, very durable from certain angles or something. Let's go ahead and deal some more damage to him. Let's see how long he can hold up. Well, he's still functional. I mean, we've punched some serious holes in him, but his reactor is still lit, and he's still got engines, I think in every orthogonal direction. His weapons are still largely intact. Oh, he's lost... He's lost one of his weapons, but... Oh, no, we did break the connection here, you see? We damaged the conveyor. You shouldn't rely on conveyors. Uh, so he's only got whatever is in these weapons left as, as weaponry. Uh, but he's still pretty... Oh, no... What what happened? Why did he break? Oh. So left cockpit is the primary cockpit. So he's actually going to be pretty good even after those barrages. I really like this ship. The Judge is very well designed. It's a little bit wasteful in terms of its topological layout, but I have a hard time faulting it for that because its performance is so good and it survives missile barrages quite well. Part of that is because it's uh, twice as heavy as my ship, not quite twice, so I'm not too, I'm not too concerned with it. Uh, and I accidentally hit this with a st stray missile at some point. <laughs> so let me go ahead and cut apart my ship and show you how it is laid out, and then I'll describe the sort of uh, things you want to think about when you're laying out your ship. Now, as you can see, I've done literally what I described. I have created an armor out of my weaponry, and I've got this line of heavy armor blocking off my cargo pod. Now, if I was creating it again, I'd probably move these forward one more notch. I think that they are a little too close to the cockpit, or alternately move the cockpit back one more notch, but it's still pretty good. Uh, and on the sides, I have this here, and as I mentioned, nothing, no link-ups at all. There's just absolutely zero uh, inputs into this from other cargo bays. You have to load it up from the side. Um, all of the reactors are loaded off of this front system, which I think if I was to do it again, I might actually lock them in using small conveyors throughout. There are definitely optimizations you could do to make this ship better. Uh, one of the things I did uh, a lot of when I was doing modded versions is I'd have uh, battery backups, but battery backups are not very good in vanilla so I didn't bother this time and that means that if this area is destroyed we won't have any power but if this area is destroyed we won't have any cockpit so this is the sort of layout I'm talking about the front is defended by a lot of heavy weaponry and such and these make excellent armor even after they've been damaged the sides and the top and the bottom are defended by engines and in the heart I've got a lot of these reactors defending me. Uh, the actual uh, armor is very, very light. I don't use any heavy armor at all, and I've only got one layer thick armor in nearly every location. Uh, and it serves pretty well. It keeps my mass quite low, and it leaves the ship surprisingly functional. These air gaps are also a vital part of my defenses. This ship is not as durable as some of my other ships, but it is really light. This is the same mass as the lightest of the fighters. Oh wait, the lightest of the fighters was actually really light, wasn't it? As the middle of the fighters that I showed you yesterday. But its damage output is staggering. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. If you have any design preferences for your bombers or heavy fighters, feel free to let me know. I'm going to probably do an episode on modded stuff real soon now, because with mods, you can create uh, heavy fighters and bombers that are leagues better. Not by cheating, but by having better topology. 
Boy, that sounds nerdy. And thank you very much to VDI, regardless of what sort of weird stuff they're doing on Steam, and to uh, Ex Extropic Monk. Extropic Monk. Oh. They both have excellent ships, especially Extropic Monk. <laughs>